Good evening and a, a very warm welcome to you all. I'm Claire Reichenbach, the CEO of the James Beard Foundation, and I'm delighted to welcome you all to our eighth and indeed my very first annual Leadership Awards. Yeah. We're so excited to make our Chicago debut tonight. The Leadership Awards have traditionally taken place in New York in the fall, but this year, we really wanted to harness the powerful profile of the full awards weekend to shine an even brighter light on the leadership honorees and the incredible work you do in pursuit of a better food world. Our theme for all our awards this year is RISE, and you truly personify the spirit and the substance of that theme. Our honorees, and many of you with us tonight, have been outspoken advocates of a better food system. No community rises to the occasion like the food community. And we hope that by highlighting these awards on our industry's biggest weekend of the year, that we can really amplify our honorees' stories and raise broader awareness of the causes they champion. So while I am new to the culinary world, a values-driven approach has been a focus of much of my career and matters to me deeply. We give so much of our life force to our jobs, and I want to ensure that my energy is channeled towards things I really care about, and I am by no means alone. Our foundation and its community of chefs, restaurateurs, media professionals, and more are truly passionate, not only about what we eat, but about the, the impact that our food choices have on the world. So we are committed to elevating the voices of chefs and other members of our community as powerful advocates and change agents, whether it's through our Chef's Boot Camp for Policy and Change, or the summits we hold on critical issues like antibiotics and food. This fall, in partnership with the Rockefeller Foundation, uh, we're launching an online curriculum for culinary school instructors focused on reducing waste. And we're also implementing a nationwide sustainable seafood rating system for restaurants and other food service um, operations, including, you'll be pleased to hear, the James Beard House. And this program is known as Smart Catch. So as you can see, the James Beard Foundation is really well placed to, to, lead, to play a leading role in making our food world more delicious, diverse, and sustainable for all, but harnessing the power of the culinary community to drive change. Our Distinguished Leadership Award honorees tonight, along with our 40 past honorees, have all played a really important part of our evolution, and we're, we're so grateful for that. The leaders we honour tonight are remarkable, but not only for identifying where change is needed, but for actually making it happen. They are visionary and pragmatic. Seeing the bigger picture, but also rolling their sleeves up and digging in, they find creative, actionable solutions. And critically, they get things done. When Dara Cooper observed that a lack of food access was oppressing her community in ways beyond just hunger, she organized trucks to bring healthy food to the community. Fred Hefner, Ferd Hefner, saw that small farms didn't have the same advantages as larger ones when it came to modernizing their businesses. So he helped secure millions of dollars in federal grants to encourage advancements like organic certification and setting up of farm stands, bettering the farmers and bettering the planet. Faced with the paradox of crippling food waste in a country where millions of people go hungry every night, Doug Rao built a grocery store that rescues both food and people. When a co-worker was fired for requesting just a three cent raise on behalf of his fellow farm workers, Ramon Torres led the way to a new contract that more than doubled their wages. And when black farmers were being driven off their land and denied their civil rights, Shirley Sherrod determined a way to buy land and inspire others across the country to do the same. And 50 years later, she continues to empower African-American families through farming and the food system. These are such amazing and inspiring stories, and I'm so impressed and humbled by all that you do.
exactly 60 years ago to the day, James Beard, and it's his birthday today as well, so we should raise a toast to James Beard. Um, he wrote a letter to one of his dear friends, the cookbook writer Helen Evans Brown, in which he said, if we really believe in food, we must do something about it, for our voices should be raised above the rest. This year's honorees believe in the power of food, and boy, do they do something about it. We at the Foundation are so proud to raise our voice in concert with them and to champion their important work. So congratulations, and thank you all to this year's Leadership Award honorees. And now, how lucky are we to celebrate here in Hyatt's beautiful new LEED certified headquarters? Um, thank you so much to our generous hosts tonight, who are leaders in the hospitality industry. Hyatt has established a vision for its food and beverage program that is good for people, the planet, and communities. These values are truly reflected here and in many more of their properties. But to tell you more, please welcome Hyatt's Senior Vice President of Operations and Human Resources for the Americas, Mark Pardue. Well, thank you, Claire, and congratulations on your no new role as leader of the James Beard Foundation. Um, and we're so pleased and delighted to welcome all of you, our distinguished guests here this evening, to Hyatt's <coughs> headquarters, what we call the Hyatt Hub. We moved in here last August, so we're coming up on one year, and what a beautiful uh, evening to congratulate and celebrate the uh, honorees tonight. Hyatt steadfastly uh, shares the James Beard Foundation's commitment to sustainability. As Claire mentioned, food thoughtfully sourced, carefully served, is Hyatt's global food and beverage philosophy. And it's based on three pillars, healthy planet, healthy people, and healthy communities. Through partnerships with local farms and small producers, our chefs obtain the freshest ingredients for our menus so they are balanced and ensure our guests can maintain their wellness routines when they're on the road traveling and hopefully staying with us. We encourage our chefs to adhere to these principles um, and practices to reduce Hyatt's overall carbon footprint. Our company has a global goal of increasing the usage of sustainable seafood as well. We are well on our way to our commitment to the World Wildlife Foundation to purchase 50% sustainable seafood of which 15% is ASC or MSC certified by the end of this year. Another frontier that we're looking at and one where much work is to be done is in the area of food waste reduction. Hyatt has partnered with the American Hotel and Lodging Association and the Rockefeller Center along with IDEO, an innovation firm, to explore this topic and we know that there is much work to do to reduce the amount of food that goes to waste. Our culinary teams at the hotel level who we are so proud of and appreciate uh, are also strongly encouraged and supported to apply their entrepreneurial spirit to innovate sustainable practices that are relevant to each of the locations in which we operate. As a result, our colleagues are cultivating gardens, they're preparing their own homegrown produce, they're tending apiaries, and teaching young culinarians and guests the art of preparing healthy food. We're so delighted, again, that you are all able to join us at our new headquarters to celebrate leaders in the sustainability movement and to know that so many people and organizations are dedicating themselves to this very, very important cause. I would also like to point out that our dinner this evening is being prepared by two of the finest chefs that we have at Hyatt, Martin Pfefferkorn, and Juan Salgar, who I know are going to impress you with the cuisine and the menu tonight. I think we're off to a great start with the uh, first course. I would like to th also thank our Vice President of Operations here in Chicago for Hyatt, Ms. Colleen Coretti, who I am lucky enough to have on our team here in Chicago and runs point for us uh, with our very valued partnership with the James Beard Foundation. 
I'd like to offer best wishes to the foundation on their third big uh, awards week here in Chicago. We love that the foundation has chosen our great city as the location for the industry's most important and prestigious honors. And at this point, I'd like to turn it back over to Claire. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Mark. We love this great city, too. <laughs> Is that David? Do you get money? You're getting money again. So now I'd like to thank the rest of our partners whose generous support has made this year's Leadership Awards possible. Founding support was provided by Grace Communications Foundation. Thank you so much. Additional support is provided by the Blended Burger Project and the Mushroom Council. Thank you. And featured do donors on our menu this evening include Australis Aquaculture, Neiman Ranch, and Sea to Table. And thanks to, our, to Distinguished Vineyards for providing the delicious wines tonight. And so finally, I want to acknowledge our Leadership Awards Committee, especially its chair, Anne McBride, and members Ricardo Salvador and Sam Cass, who are Leadership Award winners themselves, and Danielle Nuremberg and our talented foundation staff who helped to lead this awards program, especially Mitchell Davis, Chris Moon, and Ashley Koziak. I also want to thank our dedicated board of trustees, led by our chair, Fred Siegel. And many of the people I've mentioned are here with us tonight, so would you all please stand? <laughs> that means you've got to stand. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now I'm delighted to introduce our Master of Ceremonies. After landing the sommelier position at the world-renowned Everest restaurant in Chicago, she became the youngest woman ever to pass the final level of the Master Sommelier exam. She is the restaurateur behind The Boarding House and Seven Lions, and as a member of Chew Chicago's Board of Directors. For 10 seasons, she hosted Emmy award-winning television series, Check Please, on PBS. And tonight, she rises for Deborah's Place, an organization that assists and empowers women facing homelessness. So please welcome Alpana Singh. Well, thank you, Claire. I am so honored to be uh, here with all of you tonight. I spent my entire life in the food community. I grew up working in my family's grocery store in California, and my father was actually a chef for 30 years. So it was a natural progression to find a career in the restaurant industry. Food has been so central to my story. To me, food is nourishment, it's love, it's connection, it's health, and it's joy. I was fortunate to grow up always knowing where my next meal was coming from. And as an adult, food has been my livelihood, always providing, helping me to grow and prosper. I'm grateful to do my work in a superb culinary destination like Chicago, home to some of the finest restaurants and chefs in the world, and to work with people whom I consider an extended family, diverse and talented from many countries and many cultures. But living in Chicago for many years, I also see neighborhoods where a grocery store can't be found for blocks on end. You wonder how people are able to shop for their families, put nutritious food on the table. And we all know the developmental and health risks for children who go to school without breakfast and maybe without dinner the night before. Where food has always been my source of joy and strength, I know that in many households, food is a source of stress and illness. Everyone should have access to healthy and nutritious food, regardless of economic status or geographical location. And we guess. <laughs> and we must also defend and protect the rights of those individuals who work to bring that food safely to our tables. The farmers, the laborers, the activists, 
all while doing everything we can to preserve the environment. These are not easy challenges to face. We need visionary leaders like tonight's honorees. And they provide one of the most important ingredients in our recipe for a better world, and that's hope. I'm inspired by their fight. I'm inspired by their energy. I'm inspired by their victories, both large and small. They work tirelessly for their causes, and they don't do it for the awards and the accolades. But what a pleasure it is to be able to give them the recognition and appreciation they so deserve. Shirley, Ramon, Doug, Dara, Ferd, I am so proud to rise for you tonight. <laughs>